September 8, 1943. The surrender of the Kingdom of Italy is announced. Both the Allies and the Axis jump into action. This is the Armistice of Cassibile. The armistice came into force on the 3rd of September and was brokered by representatives of General Eisenhower from the Allies and General Badoglio on the side of Italy, who had been put into power after Mussolini was thrown out. The negotiations were undertaken in secret so that Hitler would not take over Italy. This was the result of a number of events which had played out since May of that year. Let's take a look back and get some background. After the Axis powers were pushed out of North Africa in May of 1943, the Allies began the bombing of the Italian capital, Rome. They invaded Sicily on the 10th of July and were preparing to land on the mainland. In late July, Mussolini met with the Grand Council and a resolution was passed letting the King choose a new ruler. The next day, Pietro Badoglio was given the role by the King and Mussolini was arrested. The people of Italy thought this meant that the war would be over, but Badoglio kept up the pretense of remaining an ally to Germany while negotiating the armistice with the Allies in secret. Let's now listen to a primary source, the BBC broadcast of Eisenhower's message detailing Italy's surrender. This video was sourced from the verified YouTube channel of British Pathé, a newsreel producer in the UK from 1910 to 1970. This is General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Force. The Italian government has surrendered its armed forces unconditionally. As Allied Commander-in-Chief, I have granted a military armistice, the terms of which have been approved by the government of the United Kingdom, the United States, and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Thus I am acting in the interest of the United Nations. The Italian government has bound itself to abide by these terms without reservation. The armistice was signed by my representative and the representative of Marshal Badoglio, and it becomes effective this instant. Hostilities between the armed forces of the United Nations and those of Italy terminate at once. All Italians who now act to help reject the German aggressor from Italian soil will have the assistance and the support of the United Nations. The message was definitely a positive one for the United Nations, as demonstrated by the newsreel's reaction footage. So that message did not contain any detail as to the competency of the Italian armed forces, but it did mention that the focus of their combined efforts going forward would be to rid Italian soil of the German aggressor. Let's see how that went. After the announcement of the armistice on the 8th, the Allies initiated Operation Avalanche, the invasion of mainland Italy near Salerno. It was believed that by going through Italy, the soft underbelly of Europe, the Allies would be able to get to Germany. Invading Italy would also make trade through the Mediterranean Sea easier. The Allies were able to capture up to Naples and the Italian Navy was also quickly turned over to them. Hitler also initiated a plan on the 8th, Operation Axis. The main goal was to take over Italy and prevent their switch to the Allies. While Mussolini was still in power, there had been a small amount of German divisions in Italy to help his defence. These provided resistance to the Allied takeover. Over the course of 11 days, German troops fought and disarmed over 1 million Italian soldiers across Italy, France, Yugoslavia and Greece. The Italian resistance was not strong or organised as they had not been given orders regarding the effect of the armistice. This was true also of the Air Force. The Germans also succeeded in taking the city of Rome and set up the Italian Social Republic, a German puppet state with Mussolini ruling again. Instead of the Allies taking over the country as planned, Italy was now in a civil war with the German-controlled North and the Allied South. So was the armistice of Cassibile a turning point? First let's look at why someone might argue that it is one. For example, it took one of the three Axis powers out of the war and would have boosted confidence in the Allies as well as the boosting the morale of those on the home front. At the time, it would have made Germany seem closer to defeat for the Allied forces. 
Another reason is that for many people living in Italy, escaping the rule of Mussolini was very important and fortunate for them. However, most people feel that the surrender of Italy was not an important turning point as the Allies didn't even get to Germany through Italy, and the most that they got out of the attack was perhaps distracting the Germans from their next invasion in Normandy. Even for people who lived in Italy, if you lived in the Socialist Republic, you would not be freed from fascist rulership until the fall of Germany in 1945. Overall, this doesn't seem like a turning point in that it changed the history of the war, but it did signify a point when the Allies started to begin defeating the Axis, in a battle similar to the defeat of France three years earlier. In both cases, it was a major power of the Alliance that was defeated, but not one of the powers that would end the war. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Here now is a list of websites that are used for information or media in this video.